We are back, ladies and gentlemen, with another crazy episode of Grinding Leagues 4. Last episode, we finally unlocked all relic tiers, and our final relic choice was Execution. A relic that allows you to one-shot almost any foe if they have under 20% hit points. This relic will massively help me with various content such as Rage 3, Chambers, Inferno, and pretty much anywhere I PVM, including even Slayer. Now that the relic grind is over though, we can focus more on upgrading our magic build with even better gear and gradually make it to that dragon rank to end our league's 4 journey. After the intense grind though to tier 8, I chilled out by setting up my new FK options at the Zaya altar. I used my pure essence I got from brimstone keys to get to 77 rune crafting to make the blood runes at the Zaya altar. I had gotten my 50 mil thieving and enough GP for a long time so it was time to AFK some other skills for points since thieving won't give me anything really useful anymore. With last recall, I was able to AFK blood rune crafting a bit nicer. I decided though it was time to focus on getting the imbue heart and the occult necklace from Slayer whenever I wasn't grinding for the shadow. The imbue heart should boost my charge stage power outside raid so that it would be a very nice addition to my arsenal. Occult necklace is your best in slot necklace for magic and it'll give me 10% more magic damage. Slayer should also give me a ton of league points from Slayer related drops. And combat achievements. I can do that along the way. Some bosses can only be assigned through Slayer like Sire as well. I had leftover Kraken tasks from the Triangle Grind and it was perfect for the 300 Kraken League stats, so I did that. Also, I will most likely kill more Kraken for the Enhanced Trident task that requires 10 tentacles, and I already have 4, so it shouldn't take too long. Shortly after, I got a Black Demon task, so I decided to kill Skotizo with the totems that I got from regular Slayer at the Catacombs for points. Skotizo can be considered Greater Demon or Black Demon, so either works, but it was just, why not? I did all the combat achievements for that boss, and also 10 kills for all possible league points there. I probably will kill it more because it drops so much good resources for skilling to max. For sure. There you go. And we are absolutely done with Skotizo. I got a bunch of Abbey Demons next, so I milked those for some 99s and superior tasks. I got a bunch of tasks for leaks done. And finally, after all these detours, I got a smoke devil task. Oh shit, no way this guy got caught in the... Oh, what? No way, dude. <laughs> That's so crazy. What actually... Oh, etern no way, eternal gem. Oh my god, I need to be hard. Oh no. I mean, this is points, but damn, dude. I decided to do all the combat achievements for smoke devils for points. This all worked out nicely. The only one that was tricky though was the special attack one since I had either the fang or the DDS for my spec weapon. So yeah, it took a bit of regening with the light bearer and there was a lot of people that kept hopping around. But luckily none of them were hasty and attacked it. So that was nice. It took a few minutes to get the kill using spec only tasks, but it worked out. Well, the plan was a success, and now we have the occult. Although there was no heart to be seen, but maybe next time. Anyways, it was time to head back to Tombs of Muska with our fangless melee extraordinaire boy, Rexy, to once again try to claim that most powerful prize, the Tumakin Shadow. Execution Relic's true form is that of the Sage's Axe. It is a ranged throwing axe that attacks as fast as a blowpipe. This weapon exceeded my expectations because not only is it a godly powerful, it's also super versatile too. I ended up using it for more than just the one-shot ability. It was really nice for tagging like dust devils too. It's useful in pretty much every combat related room though and boss room at Rage 3. The only room that is not as OP is at Akka because the enraged phase has protection from range and thus blocks the axe's effect entirely. There are some boss scenarios where the boss is coded to not take range damage or some weird mechanics. For example, phase 2 warning cannot be axed because that HP, instead of going down, it goes up. Outside of those two instances though in TOA, I might have missed one. The axe works everywhere else though in Raid 3. So Kefri, even the Shields, Baba, Zabak, P1 Warden, the Obelisk, and P3 Warden, even the Enraged Phase, it works against them as well. Especially P3 Warden Rage because as soon as the Enraged happens, you can instantly throw the axe once or twice and it's deleted. Anyways though, the raids have gone a lot faster, which is great, but the DPS difference now between me and Rexy has widened a lot. Because he still doesn't have the Fang yet. 
but we're still trying to manipulate the rooms dying early on so that it's close to 50 50 on who gets the purple ah uh, okay well it's 50 50 though we haven't seen a fang in two days if we see a fang it should be in rexy's name only so oh man at this point i'll just take a shadow bro honestly Rick. oh oh my god it actually happened dude <laughs> no way dude holy shit we got the we got the shadow holy shit okay okay we're getting you the fang all right we're getting you the fang for sure yes we are committing to the thing oh my god dude let's go home damn this thing is gonna be used everywhere man well we used to try for like two days so it's amazing that i finally managed to get the shadow but i was really hoping rixty would get his fang before i get the shadow because the shadow is many times more rare than the fang. The fang is the most common drop, so it was kind of worth betting on, but I can't believe it didn't happen, right? We're like 20 plus purples in since the last fang, and me and Rayxy have not seen a single one in like the last four days. Anyways though, every boss at raids is getting deleted. Like rooms where the trident was struggling like Bob and Carefree, it's just another walk in the park boss with a shadow. The four times accuracy of the shot in race three normally it's three times but in race three is four times and with the magic relic bonus accuracy it just makes this weapon not give a damn about its target's defense execution saves probably like five minutes per raid but shadow saving easily 10 minutes per raid if i actually go all out with it we went from doing 40 minute race to under 30 minute race with just my shadow alone probably even faster rixie had a fang oh man we died a bunch accidentally as well unintendedly and we still did in 31 minutes i'm at 15 percent, dude <laughs> well we did furry wardens <laughs> that was so yo that's crazy <laughs> oh you got purple yo i <laughs> know uh, can't be it's a fang it's a fang oh my god I've been able to avoid fangs for four days straight, so please, please avoid it once again. Oh my, what the? No! No! What? No! You, oh my god, it's almost as bad. No! No! Hopefully, some of you guys are struggling where your teammates aren't getting stuff, but you're just getting stronger and stronger. Maybe, you know, some of these strats might help you guys out. The rooms know where Rig C was mailing and had no issues doing damage. I just ended up using the trident instead like Bob and Carefree so that he can milk those points and it's only a little bit slower. Minions like the monkey puzzle room though, I still shadowed it as it didn't seem to give that many points anyways and it saved a lot of time. Rooms like Crocodile where it's just such a bad fight, we still shadowed that and axed it just to really get rid of it completely. But yeah we found a nice middle ground and the rates were only a few minutes slower and we did achieve a 50 50 drop chance the last strategy we added aside from me like dying and using triumph was that any enrage phase i wouldn't even attack and i will only axe the enrage phase when it was only one row left so that racy can get those points oh is it it is it is yep 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 yeah i got the key Oh my god. Oh my god. Please, 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 please. Please, come on. Give this man a fang. Oh! No, he got the fang! Oh my god. Oh my god. I stayed up till 8 30 a.m. and it was worth it. Holy shit. <laughs> holy shit dude let's go dude honestly i'm more excited for this guy to get a fang than i was excited to get a shadow and i'm not even gonna lie that is literally the truth like holy shit this was the biggest drop of all time. <laughs> we have to do another raid <laughs> oh my god first fang in like 20 plus purples holy shit after though five plus days of toa racing we've got our desired weapons Yo, dude, Rexy, you are not missing, bro. Holy shit. You're more accurate than me at Baba, that's for sure. Holy. Holy shit, we literally killed it so fast. <laughs> we didn't even get a meteor. <laughs> literally, the meteor couldn't even hit us.
it was time to move on from race 3 for now. I only have a Missouri mask left, which isn't super useful for me as it's just a range helm. But I might come back as there's lots of points I could get by doing combat achievements. And there's also the KC League stats as well. We will see. It was the next day and I woke up terribly late because we stayed up till like 9 a.m. trying to get that thing. But the grind continued and I started off with my next item upgrade, the Tormented Bracelet. I did my usual and cut some emeralds at the Alcor Red Gem Shop to 90. I also cut some silly skips at the Fossil Island for the Mushroom Cap, which lets me make the Mushroom Pie. This lets me boost guarantee 4 crafting levels per bite to make the Zenit Bracelet, and it's also a task. The cap was glitched, which meant you couldn't really get it, but now it's fixed, so it's super easy to get. I got like 2 in 10 minutes. Uh, you know what? I don't know where my glory went, guys. I might have dropped it or something, but it's okay. I'm going to make a fury, man. I'm just going to make a fury. I have 90 crafting anyways, so... And also, I have so many chaos runes that I, I'm, I'm just going to buy another one back. Easy. There you go. Now we're properly geared up, and then we're going to get Tormented Bracelet. And now I need to get my first Senate Shard from the Demonics to make this Senate Bracelet and then enchant it for that Tormented Bracelet. They are considered Black Demons, so I decided, you know what, let's do Slayer for a Black Demon task for some macro efficiency. I can get the Imbue Hard Chance and work on more combat achievements on the way. I chinned a Dust Devil task for 99 range. I had some leftover. I also got a Moss Giant task, which means that I can get the boosted chance of Mossy Keys through Slayer. And I got a bunch from that one task, and I used it to kill Briofida. I got the essence, Brio Fighter's essence from that task, and I did all the combat achievements for the boss, which gave me a ton of points. Next, I got Kel Fight task, which I quickly rushed to do Desert Hard Diary for the permanent ropes in the Kel Fight Lair, because I was going to be teleporting back and forth every kill, so I would want to have to use a rope every time. I decided to main the lamp use for Herbler, because I feel like with my build, it's probably one of the hardest ones to deal with. Then I did a bunch of Kelfi Lee tasks like the 150 damage with the Karas. This was actually quite easy with the Berserker Relic because the Berserker Relic lets me guarantee a max hit at the start. And as long as my HP is low enough, my base max hit is a 50. So I essentially just went inside the private Kelfi room. There's two gardens there. I kept spamming the two. I leave. I go back in, spam the two again, and wait for that Karas to proc. Then I went to do my Kelfi Queen combat achievements and also some League tasks associated with it. The strategy though for killing Kelfi Queen was really simple. I kept my HP low for the Berserk boost. Uh, it was around like 45, 50, but then I later moved it up to like 80. Just because I found that just rushing into it and running straight to the boss was uh, better with higher HP. So that way I didn't have to eat in between that. And then the Berserk damage goes off because I get like 3x max hits for the Berserk because of the delayed effect from the distance I got with the Shadow. Once the first form was down, I would just go a bit far away so I can get the 3x max hits again with Berserker. It also applies to the second phase, so it was super easy. After I kill the boss, I just teleport out and last recall to skip the spawn timer. Sometimes I would use the altar at the Monastery just every few kills once my prayer runs out. But yeah, I can use the instance room to reset the boss. It's a bit faster than waiting for the boss to spawn. And you also get advantage of that stall berserk max hits multiple times. I got the D pick too, which is nice for 99 mining later on. And finally, we got the black demon task, but I wanted to run some errands. I love getting sidetracked, honestly. I forgot my hunter is 95 and I decided let's get 99 real quick because it's only like 20 minutes with the trickster relic for my current level. And it's going to be good for whenever I find a lucky impling again, because that's just going to be a passive task. Then I did the real course, which was the Harzair Diaries for the Ash Sanctifier. So that when I do Abyssal Demons again, or of course, Demonics, I will get some free XP using the Sanctifier because it turns the Demonic Ashes into Prayer XP. So we have a lot of planks, old planks from Kraken, so I'm gonna quickly just use them up. There it is, 70 con and base 70s. Let's go. My setup though for Demonics was Shadow with my Cult Necklace and a Melee Fang Switch. I use my Light Bear Ring so I can Fang Spike as much as possible when I can't Shadow because my Melee is gonna be pretty weak 
but the fang specs will pretty much always land so i asked whenever grills were under 20 percent hp kills were real smooth and actually fun i also got a lot of ballista pieces too for a future task for the light and heavy ballista oh i got it yo right before the test let's go yes okay right on right dude literally right on right Okay, boys, we're going to eat one of these right now. And that should get us to 94 crafting. Send my bracelet. Wait, what? I need 95. Bro. Second time's the charm. Yeah, 95. Send a bracelet. A boom. Ooh, tormented bracelet. Ooh, first send jewelry. Easy. Hell yeah. I'm almost there. I'm almost at full power, guys. We're so close. I just got to get ancestral. At last, the tormented bracelet is made. We now have 5% extra magic damage from the bracelet and 10% from the occult, which applies to every magic attack. With the shadow, however, it becomes triple to 45% extra damage because that's just how the shadow works. It's insane. And to wrap up our day, I decided to do a challenge mode chambers. I wasn't planning on doing it this early yet because I want to go for the big heart, but the legendary chunk man aka karamjan locked man or a guy with many many unique accounts verif decided he wanted to do chambers for that diary task and i figured okay i can do that too with him so we decided let's go all the way challenge mode chambers i heard it got even buffed to accommodate for all the relics in this league so that's gonna be interesting to see Anyways, though, we went for it. Shadow build just absolutely destroys everything at Chambers. Even things like Tecton and Fossa, who is normally super resistant to magic. They could not handle the insane two-take shadow with this buffed up accuracy. Oh my god! Dude, you hit a 156 through its defense. Yeah, you got frozen, dude. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think you have to physically dodge the range attack, actually. Yeah, you have to physically dodge it. It's it's like a projectile. Wow, okay, it's literally new mechanics. Because we attack so fast, it was better to stand still at Spula and shoot the portal until right before you die, eat up and go back in again and just stay there and keep a on the portal. It was uh, super easy to do. Oh, I forgot to use my Thorn Axe. Fuck. Here, let me throw it. It's perfect. It's perfectly in 20%. There you go. Yes. Oh, <laughs> that's so funny, dude. Nice. That's so funny. Don't die, though. Don't die, though. Oh, my God. Double eat. Holy. Okay, it's dead. All right, I'll take this overload and yeah, and you take this. Also, Ohm was a bit different, too, because we mage the melee hand as well. That means we can attack the melee hand from a distance. That's just how strong the combat relics are. You can bend the rules of your normal strategies. So when we were doing the melee hand, I could also skip the specials normally like I would with the mage hand. So that means I could skip specials for both the hands. And it was really nice because there was no specials to deal with. Apparently though, challenge more raids are guaranteed purples. And I already mentioned the bosses are beefed up. This is like the reverse fucking head turn. <laughs> this is so strange. Oh my god. Okay, it's almost there. Almost 20%. Okay, let's see if it works. Oh, it works. It worked. It worked. It worked. It worked. Oh, my God. Oh, the trailers didn't lie this time. Well, well we got to stop the healing. We got to stop the healing. Okay, I'm going to use it. Okay, ready? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you need, you need the shadow, basically. <laughs> That's the thing you need. See you later. A boom purple oh my god damn wow that's crazy so they they amped up the challenge mode so hard that that you just get guaranteed purple oh shit what i get what i get oh buckler oh okay damn uh, oh man i got the buckler but we did the diary and uh we did a bunch of stuff cool anyways though getting ancestral tebow and other drops will be a lot easier than i thought this week because i wasn't sure if we would ever get guaranteed purples Anyways, I still want to focus more on grinding out this imbue heart though, since we've already been working on it. But we'll be going hard at Cox soon enough. Thank you for watching, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in a few days, friends. Ciao.